One unique feature of the Swim L&B is the way you read the signal level while aligning the ODU. Though the aligning and peaking is done exactly the same way with any KAKU ODU, you need to connect your signal level meter and keep the L&B powered. That's done using the ASL or by the use of a power passing splitter on some signal level meters. We'll look at the ASL first. The ASL looks like a four-way splitter, but it's very different. The input port at the top is connected directly to the SWIM L&B. The bottom left port is 18 volts out. The next port is power in. This is where the power supply cable is connected. You'll see the power ports all have red inserts in the connectors. The next port is labeled 119 and passes the signal from the satellite at the 119 orbital slot. The right bottom port is labeled 101 and it passes the signal from the satellite at 101 degrees. Here's how it works. Connect the input from the SWIM L&B. Now connect the power from the power inserter. The power inserter has to be in line because the output voltage of your signal level meter isn't enough to power the L&B. Your meter has an 18 volt output and the L&B requires a minimum of 21 volts. Don't connect any receivers to the ODU until you've peaked it. Once the receiver is connected, the L&B is switched out of the setup mode and you can't peak the ODU. Let's look at the ODU alignment using the bird dog signal meter first. Connect the 101 port to the meter input. Press the arrow button to select DirecTV SWM 101. Now roughly align the ODU for maximum gain. Once you have the highest signal level, connect the jumper to the 119 port on the ASL and set your meter to read the 119 satellite. Now align the tilt. At this point you have rough aligned the ODU. Move the jumper back to the 101 port on the ASL. Now you need to fine tune it using the dithering process covered in the KAKU ODU certification course. Follow the same dithering steps you would on any KAKU ODU installation. Now let's look at the alignment using the AccuTrack Pro. Follow the same instructions for connecting the ASL to the power inserter and ODU. Connect the 101 port to the meter at the 101 input. Turn the meter on and view the 101 satellite signal and rough align the ODU to get maximum gain. Once you have the highest signal level, connect the jumper to the 119 port on the ASL and set your meter to read the 119 satellite. Now align the tilt. At this point you've rough aligned the ODU. Move the jumper back to the 101 port on the ASL. Now you need to fine tune it using the dithering process covered in the KAKU ODU certification course. Follow the same dithering steps you would on any KAKU ODU installation. Now let's look at alignment using a Digisat 3. Follow the same instructions for connecting the ASL to the power inserter and ODU. Connect the 101 port to the meter at the input. Turn the meter on and view the 101 satellite signal and rough align the ODU to get maximum gain. Once you have the highest signal level, connect the jumper to the 119 port on the ASL and set your meter to read the 119 satellite. Now align the tilt. At this point you've rough aligned the ODU. Move the jumper back to the 101 port on the ASL. Now you need to fine tune it using the dithering process covered in the KAKU ODU certification course. Now let's look at alignment using the Super Buddy. Follow the same instructions for connecting the ASL to the power inserter and ODU. Connect the 101 port to the meter at the input. Turn the meter on and view the 101 satellite signal and rough align the ODU to get maximum gain. Once you have the highest signal level, connect the jumper to the 119 port on the ASL and set your meter to read the 119 satellite. Now align the tilt. 
At this point, you ruffle on the ODU. Move the jumper back to the 101 court on the ASL. Now you need to fine tune it using the dithering process covered in the KAKU ODU certification course. With the ODU aligned, you can complete the wiring and grounding of the system. We'll look at that next. Like all DirecTV installations, the system must be grounded to meet National Electric Code standards at minimum. Since there's only one cable from the ODU to the network in the home, you can use a single ground block. Remember, the ODU and the cable both need to be grounded. Always ground every installation to meet code in your area. If you aren't sure how to ground, ask your supervisor. In order to make sure everything is working properly on each swim installation, you'll need a swim installation meter like this. The swim meter verifies that each cable drop within the home can support the swim's operation. When the power on button is depressed for two seconds, all LEDs will turn on. If all the LEDs don't turn on, the meter's not functioning properly and won't provide an accurate reading. Connect an IRD to an electrical power outlet. When using the swim installation meter, don't unplug the swim power inserter from the LMB any time beyond this point. Power on the receiver. Now, force a software download by pressing 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8 on the remote control at the hello screen. Complete the guided setup in the automated program guide or APG download. Verify that you see video after the APG download. If you don't, check the cable run to the receiver. It may have an unwanted or substandard component in it, or you may have to repair or replace the cable and the connectors in that run. Now check each cable using the meter. If everything is okay, all lights will be on. You can refer to the swim meter troubleshooting chart you'll receive at the end of this session for the test results on each cable run. It'll let you know if the signals you need are getting to the receiver, and if they aren't, what the problem might be. Now that you've made sure all the cable runs are working properly, you can start connecting the other receivers. We'll look at that next. One of the great features of the SWIM technology is the ability to connect a two-tuner DVR with one cable. If you look at the input on a DVR, you'll see one is labeled SWM or, in the older models, FTM. By connecting to that input, you don't need to connect to the second tuner, but the DVR with two tuners still counts as two separate receivers. Remember, you can only operate eight tuners off the SWM L and B, and each DVR counts as two. Follow the same process as you connect each receiver. Connect the satellite input, Connect all video and audio outputs. Connect the phone jack. Plug in the unit and power it up after it's connected to the LMB. At the blue hello screen, force a software download by pressing 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8 on the remote control, and the receiver will update to the most current software. At this point, the LMB and receiver communicate, and the receiver is assigned a frequency block. If it's a DVR, it's assigned two blocks. Don't plug the unit into power until all connections are made. When the receiver boots up, it will see the SWIM LMB and configure for the SWIM system. If you power it up before connected, it may not detect the SWIM and come up in a standard mode. If this happens, you'll have to shut it down and reboot it with a SWIM LMB connected, and that's just unnecessary steps. So as you've seen, the new SWIM LMB can certainly save you time and allow you to complete installs you might not have been able to do in the past. And the best part is you can do it all using only one cable. But there are some restrictions you need to be aware of. I'm sure over the next few months our engineers will start reducing or even eliminating those altogether. If you have an installation that involves a SWIM LMB and you haven't been trained and certified in KAKU alignment, See your supervisor and get that certification. It's our goal to help you do your job better, faster, and with fewer hassles. From all of us at DirecTV Home Services Training, have a safe and productive day.